Two Rochester police officers and the former chief are named in a lawsuit filed by a man who claims he was beaten by officers when they arrested him in August. Help me to inspire those who need inspiration. That a Rochester man is suing the city and the police. He says he was beaten by officers while he was arrested back in August. He filed a lawsuit against the officers, former Chief James Shepard, and the city in federal court last week. And tonight he's telling you what he says happened to him. Berkeley Breen spoke to the man late today. He joins us with that story, new at 5 tonight. Berkeley. Let my life be a sign of the coming generation. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Yo, I spit for those that have been silenced by the state. They try to silence us like if the party's going late. My adversary's richer, so I'm reaching for his dinner plate. He reaching for my wrist to handcuff me and put me away. Ain't got a job, so I got unemployment lines. Economic times, lack of dollar signs, it's by design. I came to set it straight like a salon in the heights. It's time to join the fight, fight, so fight for your life. I swear to Malcolm that I'm motivating, moving real fast. Building more relations, my inspirations never cash. My inspiration is the struggle of the past and present. I found my path, I'm trying to make the present heaven. I do the math, the numbers never add up. Bankers sipping champagne while we getting beat up. Time to beat the system up. This abuse is too much. Like the doubtful Troy Davis. I don't do this to be famous. I do it for the greatest. Um, let's see, where do I start this at? Uh, uh, at my place of residence, 1509 East Main Street, I was there about 10.30 at night, laying in the bed, about to watch a movie. Got a knock on the door. Uh, it was my girlfriend. So as I came down to open up the door, she was out there bringing uh, stuff that belonged to me from her house to my house. Uh, so we had a little disagreement about something, and. You know, she wanted to end the relationship at this point. So, we were carrying, I came out, you know, I had no problem. I was helping her bringing uh, the stuff out of her trunk into, put it into my car and, to, and plus into my property, into the house. Um, somewhere along the line, I don't know when, she must have called the police off, police for, I guess, to escort her there and help her get the stuff. And then police came. Uh, we were just getting the stuff out of her car and she wanted the place in my car, which is registered to her, but I'm the owner of. Uh, she, uh, the police officer was there. We was just calmly talking and one of the officers didn't really think that she had the rights to take the place. And I told her it wasn't a problem that they take them, I think she does. So the one of the officers, Baldo, Officer Baldo, was uh, helping her take the plate off the car. Uh, so I asked the officer, you know, is it, was there a problem, or can I get some another officer to escort me to her house to get my TVs from her house? Um, the officer just, the officer jumped up from behind the, the car, taking the plate off, and started and grabbed me and said something about, I thought I told you not to say a fucking thing or to say anything. I'm like, what? And he grabbed me and started punching me and we fell around the car and at that point, I, uh, he must have hit me a couple more times. I, I don't know, I believe I went unconscious. Uh, woke up, I was on the ground. Um, and then I was, I was still being hit and punched and I was laying out on, on the ground. I remember um, coming to and asking one officer, the other officer, why is he letting him do this to me? And I was punched a couple more times. I was stumped in the head. Um, then um, I heard my girlfriend scream. And then I heard the officers, the one officer say, all right. Um, I, was being, I was handcuffed at the time. All this was going on. When I woke up, I was handcuffed. 
and I heard her scream. They picked me up off the ground. Blood was everywhere. And I was taken put in a police car. Um, one of the officers, my brother, the one officer came to the police car and asked him, what was this for? Why did this happen? And he was just, he didn't know. He just held his head down. And couldn't figure out for him. So to me, it was just like he didn't know what happened. And he was just as much shocked at it as everybody else. So, uh, Sergeant came. Uh, he looked at me. Called the ambulance. Took me to uh, Rochester General Hospital. Um, from Dr. General Hospital, I was treated you know, somewhat not too good as for my, for my opinion. Um, then I was taken to the county jail. <clears throat> she came, she bailed me out uh, right then. And then we went to Strong Hospital. And from Strong Hospital, we stayed there for some hours. And, they diagnosed me and said I had broken, well, they didn't know about the broken bone in the arm. They said my, well, my elbow was felt that it fractured. My nose was fractured. Uh, I had multiple contusions on my head, uh, a, lot of, a lot of bumps. Uh, and I think they, they may have diagnosed me with a brain concussion, uh, fractured nose. My eyes were swollen. Um, had bruises on the back of my legs. Um, basically, that was what happened. Went to court. Uh, a couple of times, the charges was dismissed. And just to add a couple of facts, you know, Dwayne suffered a closed head injury as a result of what happened here. So. I, I think uh, he gave you a general description of what happened. Uh, there are more details, but based on my investigation, um, my understanding of the factual situation, what we're alleging in the complaint was that um, Mr. Ivory was standing at the back of the vehicle with Officer Harris. And what happened is the vehicle was actually titled in Dwayne's name, but it was registered to his girlfriend. So his girlfriend wanted to remove the license plates off the vehicle. So what happened is uh, Officer Baldoff went to the front of the vehicle with Mr. Ivory's girlfriend, and he was assisting her with taking that front license plate off. Mr. Ivory was standing at the back of the vehicle with Officer Harris, and what happened is Mr. Ivory calmly walked along the side of the vehicle and asked uh, Officer Baldoff if one of the officers could uh, go with him to his girlfriend's house uh, to retrieve a, a TV set. And it was at that point mm -hmm that we alleged that Officer Baldoff reached out and grabbed Mr. Ivory's hand. Mr. Ivory then tried to pull back while Officer Baldoff started punching him in the head. So um, from the facts that I understand them to be and what we're alleging is that Officer Baldoff continued punching Mr. Ivory multiple times in the head. Mr. Ivory stumbled across the front of the vehicle and was on the passenger side when Officer Baldoff took him down and at that point, Officer Baldoff continued punching him in the head repeatedly, and which you can see on the video. And at that point, I guess, uh, Mr. Ivory's shirt kind of was over his head, so he really couldn't see a lot. Um, but at that point, he was cuffed, and, um, and, and after he was cuffed, uh, Officer Baldoff continued punching Mr. Ivory repeatedly in the head. Mr. Yeah, Ivory then stopping. yelled out, and then uh, we alleged that Officer Baldoff stomped on Mr. Ivory's head with his foot. And then at this point, Mr. Ivory yelled out to Officer Harris, why are, are you letting him do this to me? And then after, uh, after more punches to the head, finally the uh, beating stopped at that point. Officer Baldoff then pulled Mr. Ivory up to his feet and brought him to the police vehicle. And at that point, uh, an ambulance was called and he was brought to Rochester General Hospital for uh, medical treatment. So, Just reading through this quickly, um, <clears throat> it says at the end, 
<coughs> that the city was negligent in, in their hiring of these two guys. I don't. I haven't gotten to the part, but it, it seems to insinuate that these guys have a history of. Well, That's what we will explore uh, during discovery on the case. We have made those allegations. Yes, we have made the allegations, and we will explore them during discovery on the case. Um, I can't sit here today and tell you these officers' histories. I don't have any personal knowledge concerning their histories. I've, we've heard bits and pieces here and there. These are allegations in the complaint which will need to be proven. But there are allegations, what I read specifically was um, that they were, should have researched who these guys were before they were hired. It seems to insinuate that you, you know something about them, but it's not in this complaint what their history is? That's correct. We don't lay out the history in the complaint. We make general allegations, and then it's our burden to prove those allegations through discovery, you know, through through the witnesses, through depositions. So, is um, your girlfriend? Is she? Uh, are you guys still together? Does she? Yes, we're still together. Um, has she testified, or has she given a deposition or anything like that in regard to this case? She has not given any depositions yet. Um, my investigator did speak with her, and she did make clear that Mr. Ivory did not hit or punch her at any time, that he did nothing to provoke this attack, that he did not push or uh, threaten either police officer, and he did nothing to deserve the type of treatment that he received from the Rochester police officers. Why did she? Why did she call the police? If um, it seems odd that you guys are that you guys were doing, you know, going okay, was there a need for police at that point, or what, what, how did that happen? Or did well, she? I, I don't know when she called. She, I think she may have called them on her way there, maybe or there while she was there uh, outside. I might, I might have been in the house, but um, they got there, and it wasn't a, actually no need for them. But she, she called them, and that was. They were there and they came. It was, uh, and obviously, if a relationship is you know coming to an end, it can be an emotional thing for each person in the relationship. And you know why she called the police, who knows? But but the the fact was is you know everything was under control and there was no problem at all when the police arrived. You know, Mr. Ivory and his girlfriend were getting along fine. And um, did you try to resist at all, or not at all? No, not at one. Not, not, no, 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 no. Dwayne, at some point, did the police tell you to stay in a particular spot? Don't do something? Did you? No. Did you not do what they told you to do? No. There was no need. What goes through your mind when you're in the middle of something like this, which sounds like happened very quickly or came about very quickly? I was, I was, when when it happened, I was just shocked at, at what was going on. And then I realized, it's, you know, it's, it's, this thing got completely somewhere out of hand. How did it get there? I don't know. I don't know what was going on. I, I, I really don't, I can't say. I don't know. I was just was shocked. That's, you know, what was going through my mind was what was going on. How did this happen? You know, what is this? What is this? Was there, was there an internal investigation? And if so, what did the police come out with as far as that internal investigation? To our knowledge, there was no internal investigation done here. Uh, I have another case that I've been working on, uh, Benny War and the professional standards section. We, uh, Mr. War did give testimony to them, sworn testimony. We have not heard the outcome of that investigation, so I, Internally, you know, waiting six, seven months for a decision there. I don't know if the Rochester police have investigated this particular incident or not. I, I don't know. Have you filed a complaint? This complaint uh, in the, federal court. But not a complaint. No. With the, no, no. We just figured it wasn't worth it. No. Considering no. Dealt with no. Anyway. No answer on the other case. You know, why would I expect an answer on this case? How long were you in the hospital? Um, for a day. Did your girlfriend stay with you the entire time? Yes. Do you have any lingering effects, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I have a PT, what is it? Post-traumatic stress, post stress disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Nasal problems. Uh, my shoulder is still bothers me. Uh, it's got a broken bone in it. Thing. I have more back pain now, neck pains still. Uh, 
going through therapy. Still going through therapy. Can you think of, can you think of anything that would have provoked the police to handle, do, handle you the way they did? Or the way they're, you're alleging they did? No. No. Can you tell us, oh, I'm sorry, I think you, you probably wouldn't want to hear. So. Can you tell us a little bit of the background? How old are you? I'm 52 years old. 52. Are you, um, were you working at the time? Do you have, is, is this interrupted anything like that? And your work or anything like that? Yeah, I was working on my property. I have property over here on East Main. That's my property where I live at. Um, I'm re rehabbing it. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, four unit building. As far as, is that your employment as well? Or, I mean, do you rent that property? Well, I, I, I'm on Social Security. Uh, but uh, that's what I was doing. I was basically just working on the property. Yeah. Have you ever had any contact with those officers before? No. No. What did the police say you were doing, or what, is they, what were you charged with? Uh, I was charged with resisting arrest. And, I was and harassment with, second. Harassment second. Yeah. The officer alleged that Mr. Ivory, I guess, pushed the officer trying to get to his girlfriend. That's what the allegation was on the harassment second. And it's our position that in the, the complaint we filed in federal court that those allegations are false, that they were fabricated in order to justify the arrest and to exonerate the officer's act, you know, from their actions. You pointed out when we spoke that while you acknowledge that it is pretty dark, the actual violent interaction between the officers was sort of dark and unclear, but the allegation that the officer made about his behavior is pretty clear on there that he did not act aggressively or push anybody or anything. It seems like he just walked up to him. Yeah, upon my viewing of the video, it was very clear that Mr. Ivory was calm and walked very slowly up towards the front of the vehicle and did not charge the officer. I mean, it's very clear that that did not happen. Just curious, the, the, the footage, that's your camera? That surveillance camera is your camera? Yes. You have that just for security purposes around that? Yes, there's been like a number of break-ins over there uh, where I've called the officers. I've called officers over there numerous times about break-ins, so I put the cameras up. Uh, and no, they didn't know the cameras was there. Were there any other uh, witnesses? Yes, yeah. well, the girlfriend was there and the other police officer. Will the document report be used in the investigation as far as the night of the incident, also what you're still dealing with after? Yes. They struck you, as far as you know, um, only with, with well, not only, but with their fists, so they didn't use a... Uh, their fists and their feet. And, okay, but not a club or any of that things, right? No. Charles, the video, um, is that part of the lawsuit? at all is in evidence in the lawsuit yes oh yes it will be absolutely has it been fi i mean i guess my editors want to know if it's been filed officially at all with a complaint or anything is it an no. official document yet no but it, it will be i mean it'll be evidence in the case and we will be turning that over uh, to the city attorney's office uh, as part of discovery so we will be giving that to them but yes it will be used as evidence has it been we've gone through this before um, with other cases like this, has it been edited in any way? That stretch that you showed that, that we've seen that's out there, or that we have in our packet, has that been edited in any way, for, at least from what we're seeing, not from the beginning to the end, but from before, prior to it starting and after it ended? I, I have not made any edits myself to any of the video footage. I know that I received some of it from Ted Forsyth, and I don't know if Ted made any edits or not. There are two videos uh, in your deep disc. Uh, the first one is a, a longer one. It's an hour long. It's 30 minutes on two different channels. That's unedited completely. The second one is the one the Rochester Indian Media posted and put on YouTube, and that has been edited slightly because we put a lighter circle around Dwayne so that as you're watching, because there's no audio, as you're watching, you can see where he's going, what he's doing, and then when he gets attacked, but there has been no other edits to that video. So that's the four plus Yeah, like four or five minutes. minute piece, yeah. yeah. Sure. So that's an unedited, outside of that shadow box. Yeah, that, that was the only thing that was added to that. Through. Yep. Sure. Was there anything of, of significance um, in the, you know, prior to that? Uh... I mean, you see the officers, I think you see them approach the house, I haven't seen it in a while, but I think you see them approach the door. Um, 
after the incident, you see one of the officers come up and try to open the door to Dwayne's house to try to get in and, and see what's going on with the cameras. Um, and there's a fairly clear uh, facial uh, picture of, I think, Baldov. Is that from the, where, where is that camera located? They have, there's three cameras there. You have one on the driveway side of the building. You have one to the back of the building. You have one to the other side of the building. Um, the camera that where, which camera you indicate you're talking about, the camera where he's coming up the stairs and check the door now, that's the camera in the back that's up at the top of the stairway. That's, that's the one where you see. That's the one that we put up the five minute one. That would be that camera. So it's, it's, it's up in the top right next to the door? Right. That's the camera that is in the, that shows that four minute clip? Or is it the one that's along the side of the house towards the front? No, it's the one on, up top, okay. on top of the stairs. Yeah. I think this was asked, but in, asked in a different way. Can either one of you guys, I know it's difficult to put your, us in the mind of someone else, but what motivated this? Why would this officer do this if, uh, if everything was going fine? I mean, well, you may want to ask the same question on the Benny Ward case. You know, why they push his wheelchair over? You know, we don't know what's going through these officers' minds. All we know is there's no explanation as to why the officer did what he did. We don't know. Um, with the, uh, you said you went, you were taken to RGH, uh, Rochester General Hospital. Um, was your care there um, because the police had brought you in, do you think? Um, different than when you went in to Strong? And what will, will there be a problem because Rochester General has a different report than Strong? Yeah, the care was, the care was uh, to me, I didn't feel it was sufficient at Rochester General. It, it was more uh, sufficient to me at, at, at Strong. Um, uh, I was, my arm was put in a sling at Strong, which it wasn't at Rochester General. And I believe that, I think that it needed it, you know, just, it was definitely needed because I couldn't barely move it, so. When it really hurt when I did, so. When were the, uh, when were the charges dismissed? Um, that was, uh, I think the I believe second it was, appearance or the third appearance. I believe it was on November 13th is when the Rochester City Court offered an adjournment in contemplation of dismissal, uh, which Mr. Ivory accepted. You know, a dismissal is a dismissal. So he accepted it, and um, that's the end of that. Are there any terms tied to that, or is that just a dismissal? No terms. The only thing that an adjournment in contemplation of dismissal will restrict him from doing is, is if Mr. Ivory wanted, wanted to pursue a malicious prosecution case, in federal court, you, you can't do that now, but he he wouldn't do that anyways because they dismiss a case. So. Is there any explanation given in the dismissal? Uh, no, I know that Mr. Ivory was represented by the public defender's office, and um, I know that the public defender's office uh, gave an affidavit uh, to the court uh, from Mr. Ivory's girlfriend explaining what had happened, and um, after that piece. Uh, came forward and the case was ready for trial. That's when the adjournment contemplation dismissal was offered. Charles, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I might have just not yep. heard, but um, was the was the video uh, did that play a role in the in the uh, ACD? I I don't know if if the court ever saw that video or not because Mr. Ivory was represented by the public defender's office and right when this happened, you know, I came on board shortly before. November 13th, you know, not too long before that, so I, I'm not sure. The DA's office see the video at all? I'm not sure. Who was, was the RPD seen the video? I'm not sure. I don't know. Who was the DA? Yeah. We're gonna even get back, get back. Yeah. I was wondering who the judge and the, and the DA were. Um, wasn't it Judge um, Judge Morse? Thomas Rainbow Morse? Yeah, yeah. Morse. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Morse. Judge Thomas Rainbow Morse and the public okay. defender, the assistant public defender was retired on the second. 
Ted, when did you guys become involved in this or find out about this? Um, to my knowledge, and Dwayne can speak to this, he was driving his car uh, over in the Jefferson Bartlett Avenue area and um, saw an Enough is Enough march and rally and was like, hey, I just had some, you know, I just had something happen to me. So he um, went to Pastor Nine of War's home and spoke with her and Pastor Nine of War called me and gave me Dwayne's number and I called Dwayne and that's how we got connected. And then... Enough is Enough has uh, supported Dwayne. We've known about his case. He's come to our meetings before, and you know we've been around. So. The the assistant public defender uh, was Grazina Myers. She represented Mr. Ivory. And what were the original charges against Mr. Ivory? It was harassment second, which is a violation, and resisting arrest, which is a misdemeanor. Anybody else? A uh, quick question, just uh, technical. So you filed a notice of claim back in November? I so that's yeah, on or about November. Yeah, right? I filed a, a notice of claim with the city of Rochester. It was served on the city on November 13th, 2013. And seven days later, on November 20th, a letter was issued by the city denying the claim. So, so then so then you've so now you've filed a complaint and in federal court yes u.s district court western district of new york we filed a complaint on january 27 2014 and basically that alleges violations of uh, mr ivory's civil rights under section 1983 and we named uh, alexander c baldoff ricky j harris jr uh, james m shepherd former chief of police um, and city of rochester is who we named in that complaint Mr. Ivory, is there anything you want to uh, ask the officers or to say anything to the officers? No. I guess he'll have that opportunity when the case goes forward. Do you have any idea, you probably don't because you haven't challenged, but do you have any idea if these officers, any discipline or any actions been taken against No them? idea at all. So likely I assume not. not. I assume not. I assume not. made by you to the department, so they probably wouldn't have pursuing any action against them, I would imagine. I don't Have you ever had any prior run-ins with uh, RPD? Sure. In my past, yes. I'm going to have some in my past of minor things, but, you know. He doesn't have a violent day, history. I'm, uh, I haven't had any violence in my past, but I, this, um, I feel like this was, uh, well, this day, nothing had occurred, so I, it, for that to have happened, I still, can't figure out why that happened. And nothing that I did nothing that day to cause any of that to what happened. It's a very different story. It's a story about people just like you. You. It is not a story about heroic individualism. Face of hatred, we show what love can change things. The 99, the 99, the 99%. We here, we arrived, and we came to represent. We the 99, the 99, the 99%.